Welcome to the Steve Stein Guitar Podcast, brought to you by GuitarZoom.com. If you want to improve your guitar playing, keep listening. If you want to improve even faster, go to GuitarZoom.com, where you'll find all of Steve's premium courses, masterclasses, and memberships that'll help you quickly and easily improve your playing. Now, here's your host, Steve Stein. Hey, Steve Stein here. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, what I wanted to do is talk to you about the importance of protecting your name and your brand, copyrights, trademarks, whatever it might be. Understanding that when you first start out in whatever business you're in, sometimes you don't realize the potential that you may have. You know, I think about when I was younger and (laughs) the fact that I was pretty convinced that nobody would ever know my name at all. And so I never thought about any of these sorts of things. I remember when I first started trying to build a website, and it was called Stein Music Lessons, which if you think about it from a hashtag or keyword point of view, that's a terrible name because it doesn't even have guitar in it. You know, Stein Music Lessons, like what do I offer, violin lessons or banjo lessons or something like that. You know, I never thought any of those things through. I didn't think about any copyright elements, anything like that when I first was getting started. And I suppose in a way, it kind of seems like it would be egotistical to think of it that way. But you have to be honest with yourself. If you're trying to build a brand and maybe that brand is you, maybe it's, you know, a name of something too. But if you're uh, trying to be a YouTuber or something like that, oftentimes the brand is going to be your name in some capacity. So I went with Stein Music Lessons on a number of different things for a long time, not understanding how important it would be to have the keyword guitar in there, Steve Stein Guitar. Well, now you'll see more and more, a lot of my stuff will have the name Steve Stein Guitar. I'd never thought about the fact of thinking ahead and planning things like, this is something you should really think about. Well, let me say this. When I first started trying to get online, when I first made the choice that I was going to try and move from the chaos of my life at the time, working 70, 80 hours a week and playing in bands and never being home, and I had this inkling in my brain that what I wanted to do was give online a chance. And this is back in the mid-2000s. This was a long time ago. And I thought, well, maybe what I'll do is I'll just start trying to sign up for every website that I can possibly find. You know, and you have to understand that even things like YouTube were kind of in their infancy stages at this point. And so if I could find a guitar or music lesson site, I would sign up because I kept thinking, well, if I can start doing some lessons online, I wouldn't have to drive anywhere. And again, this is all very, very early on. You know, I don't remember the websites I have signed up for. I do remember the big one was LessonFace.com out of New York. They're kind of the main ones that I started working with. But I just thought if I could get signed up with any website out there, maybe somebody from Colorado would see me on some website and want to do some guitar lessons, right? So it wasn't really helping me to be any less busy. But the good news is, is in signing up for all these different websites, it kind of got my name out there in a Google sense, even though I had no idea what I was doing, it actually was working. What I didn't think about doing in the early time, and this is what I was trying to get to, was getting your own websites, like your domain names, registering stevestein.com or stevesteinguitar.com or whatever it is that you're thinking you might use. And of course, now domain names are so cheap. You know, they were a little more expensive back in the day, but now they're so cheap. It's worth spending some money to secure those potential names that could be something someday and you're not spending a bunch of money, you don't have to design the websites and all that stuff at this point, just as long as you secure the names. And if you think about it, you even want to do those things on social media sites and keep your eye open for any upcoming social media sites where you might need to register your name. And I know it gets to be kind of a hassle because it's just this whole social media world just keeps going and going, but it's worth thinking about to protect your investment. And so you register those domain names, again, whatever they might be, you have to get a little creative with your thought process there. Obviously, you'd want your name, 
But if there's anything else in there that might be worth doing, it's worth securing those as well if you can afford it. Again, most domain names are pretty inexpensive anyway. And then going to the social sites as much as you can and trying to secure your name or your brand or whatever it might be. But the biggest thing I wanted to talk to you about was just the idea of the mistakes that I made when I was first getting into this and how, again, I wasn't thinking that anybody would be listening to a video, let alone a podcast, let alone a whatever, right? And so I didn't think that through. You know, there was a gentleman that owned stevestein.com for a long time who, his name was Steve Stein, and I don't remember what he did. He was did some sort of a sewing or yarn or something. I can't remember what it was or pottery. I don't remember what it was, but something. And then somebody out there bought that name from him. And of course, I never thought about that, like trying to get a hold of him and because it's his site. You know, there can be more than one Steve Stein. And so it never occurred to me, well, somebody else out there decided to purchase that name and then started using it to direct traffic through my name without my authorization or anything like that to start using it to sell product and became this whole thing. And ultimately we wound up, Guitar Zoom and myself wound up working together to acquire the name and I don't want to get into it, but we got the name. So now stevestein.com is something that we own, but it sucks that we had to go through that simply because I wasn't forward thinking. You know, that's where I started thinking about Steve Stein guitar and Stein guitar lessons. And now I own those things. You know, you can't own them all. There used to be .com and now there's .this and .this and .this. And it just gets to be ridiculous. But the point is, is just trying to make sure that you're making your life a little bit easier in those up and coming stages by getting yourself registered in whatever way you need to with domain names thinking about keywords, going to your social sites, protecting yourself there as much as you can. Even if you're not posting, it's worth protecting those names just in case you need those sorts of things. I hope you're enjoying this episode so far and you're getting motivated to take your guitar playing to the next level. Please do me a favor and leave us a rating on Apple Podcasts. It'll help the show grow and reach more rock stars like you who want to improve their guitar playing. Also, I'd love to know what parts of the episode you liked, as well as what you learned. So please share this podcast and tag us at guitarzoom.com on your social post. And now, let's get back to the podcast. And I guess the last thing I kind of want to talk about, too, is the persona that you are going to utilize on these social sites when you start posting. Like for me, other than the fact that I look the way I look, I mean, I always had long hair and there's nothing out of the ordinary. I don't wake up every day and do something different. I'm exactly who I am. And when I make videos, I'm exactly who I am. And so it makes my job really easy. I don't wake up and try and be something else or act something else or wear something else or do something else. That was always very important to me as well, because I always wanted to make sure that the content that I create is viewable by anybody, including my kids. I didn't want to put across some sort of persona of being something that I'm not or acting a certain way. And then all of a sudden it's 20 years later and I'm like ashamed of these videos that I made or whatever it might be. I'm not perfect and I don't claim to be. And that's not what I'm saying. You know, there could be somebody else out there that makes videos that have a certain edginess to them. And that's exactly what they do. And it works great for them. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm just saying what you need to do is think about that. When you start making videos, when you start making those videos and you're thinking, okay, well, the big thing right now is bait thumbnails, you know, thumbnails that bait people in or titles that don't really reflect what the content is going to be about or trying to be edgy in a certain way to get viewers, which always remember, no matter what you do, no matter who you are, your content will attract some people and repel other people. That's just the name of the game. But it's worth thinking about that before you get started. I remember being on tour and talking to somebody that I was on tour with, and they were trying to get a YouTube channel going. And they asked me, I'm looking at trying to do this certain thing, but I want to be really edgy about it. You know, I want to swear a lot and make it really edgy. And what do you think about that? 
And I said, well, there's nothing wrong with it if that's the way you want to go. You just have to understand that once you start that, you've got to kind of commit to it and still be okay with that 10 years from now or 20 years from now, unless you reinvent yourself. I mean, if you reinvent yourself, that means you might have to completely separate from what you were doing before, but understand that content still is going to exist in some capacity. You can't be ashamed of it or you can't be trying to hide something because we know how social media works. That doesn't work at all. So you have to be okay with that. Or maybe that transition would be something that honest and effective and you'd be honest with your audience and all of a sudden you're doing something different. Or all I'm saying is you got to think about those sorts of things when you start creating content because it's a direct reflection on you, your work, your talent, your business, but your personality. You know, all those sorts of things are kind of encompassed in that. So it's worth thinking about a little bit to get started. So hopefully that makes sense to you, at least gives you some idea of how to get started and do some planning for whatever it is that you're trying to do, whether you're doing a YouTube thing or you're trying to get known into the industry or whatever it might be, the way you present yourself and the accessibility that you give for people to be able to contact you, whether it be an email, which again, even email is really important. If you've got an email address that's 794063 at gmail.com. It doesn't really say much in terms of professionalism or connectivity or your brand, where if you have stevestein at gmail.com, it's better. If you have stevestein at stevestein.com, it's even better. I mean, that's even more professional. So, and of course, all this kind of stuff costs money and that's the downside, but it's worth thinking about what approach you want to take. Maybe you talk to somebody and get some advice on something, but start doing some planning and think about those sorts of things. It's really important. So thank you so much. I know today wasn't very long, but it's something I thought would be really important to talk about with you and try and get you organized a bit and thinking, like I said, doing some forward thinking on what your next plan of attack might be in your journey to developing your business. If you enjoyed today's podcast and want to learn guitar even faster, Go to GuitarZoom.com and click the Get Started button to get access to courses that are right for your interest and skill level. Again, go to GuitarZoom.com and click the Get Started button. 